While we anticipate Starship's comeback in the near future, just down the coast, SpaceX has reached the first milestone of the exciting year of 2024. This accomplishment is incredibly significant not only for SpaceX, but also as a global connectivity breakthrough. Curious to know more? Tune in to today's episode of Alpha Tech. Have you wondered why SpaceX's new direct-to-sell Starlink satellites are more important than you might think? And what was Elon Musk's reaction to this milestone? Whether it's revolutionizing digital payments, creating reusable rockets, and redefining space exploration, or transforming transportation with electric vehicles and high-speed underground mass transit, Elon Musk stands at the forefront of innovation. Often dubbed the Steve Jobs of modern times, Musk consistently pushes the boundaries of audacious ideas, and his latest venture, Starlink, is no exception. Starlink, a subdivision of SpaceX, aims to provide low-latency, high-speed internet connectivity globally. On January 2nd of 2024, new Starlink satellites were launched with the assistance of Falcon 9 rockets. This launch signifies a collaboration where SpaceX's latest satellites will offer direct-to-mobile services for T-Mobile customers, essentially acting as a mobile tower in the sky. A sky tower, if you will. It marks a significant milestone as SpaceX expands its capabilities to compete with ground-based network systems, potentially surpassing them. Just six days later, SpaceX announced a noteworthy update on the latest activities of this Starlink version, stating the SpaceX team sent and received our first text messages through our direct-to-sell satellites. Elon Musk, SpaceX's visionary CEO, expressed his pride in a caption accompanying the announcement. The first Starlink direct from satellite to mobile phone text messages are working. The initial messages exchanged included greetings like, hello, with a W, classic dialogues such as, new phone, who dis, and expressions like, never had such signal, and much wow. A photograph shared by SpaceX showed two phones held in a car park outside a Starlink building, displaying both sides of the text conversation. Even Gwyn Shotwell, the president who hadn't used X to announce anything for a long time, expressed her joy. Satellite connectivity direct to cell phones will have a tremendous impact around the world, helping people communicate wherever and whenever they want or need to. Super well done to the team and thank you. The return of Gwyn Shotwell to announce this event raises questions. What makes this achievement so special that it elicits such enthusiastic reactions from all leaders at SpaceX? Let's start by acknowledging the crucial role that Starlink's satellite mobile network plays in the current landscape. The current landscape in question is riddled with dead zones, otherwise known as remote areas far from cell towers, where smartphone users struggle to get a signal. In the United States alone, approximately 500,000 square miles or 1.3 million square kilometers lack coverage from any cellular network. However, the first set of Starlink satellites has now gained the capability to directly connect to mobile phones. Six satellites, part of SpaceX's extensive constellation, have entered orbit, laying the groundwork for SpaceX's ambitious plan to eradicate dead zones and enhance global mobile connectivity. Musk expressed his excitement stating, I think this is really a massive game changer. In a nutshell, it's no more dead zones. The initiative, named Coverage Above and Beyond, is a collaborative effort between SpaceX and T-Mobile to tackle the problem of dead zones by leveraging Starlink, the broadband mega constellation in low Earth orbit. Through this collaboration, T-Mobile customers will access Starlink connectivity with their existing phones, utilizing T-Mobile's current spectrum, eliminating the need for any new and or special equipment. Coverage above and beyond aims to deliver a total of about 2 to 4 megabits per cell zone, equivalent to supporting 1,000 to 2,000 concurrent voice calls or handling hundreds of thousands of simultaneous text messages per second, along with multiple users making phone calls.
calls. While the primary focus is on connecting with emergency services globally, similar to the satellite connectivity feature on the iPhone 14 and 15 series, it can also be used for non-emergency communication. Moreover, the United States military views SpaceX's latest Starlink satellites as integral to their operations. While details on Starlink's mobile network involvement in military plans are yet to be disclosed, its notable advantages, including unlimited coverage even in remote areas, make it an appealing service for securing lucrative contracts from the military. In the previous fall, the Pentagon granted SpaceX a contract to develop its end-to-end Starshield network. According to the company, this military-focused iteration of Starlink will initially undertake tasks like surveillance and providing global communication services for various American government agencies. The development of Starlink version 2 marks a significant step in meeting the essential functions required for U.S. military ops. However, despite the evident positive impacts, SpaceX encountered several challenges in taking the initial steps for the direct satellite-to-mobile phone connectivity service project. For example, in terrestrial networks, cell towers are stationary, but in a satellite network, they move at tens of thousands of miles per hour relative to users on Earth, as noted by SpaceX. This requires seamless handoffs between satellites and accommodations for factors like Doppler shift and timing delays that challenge phone-to-space communications. Cell phones are also incredibly difficult to connect to satellites hundreds of kilometers away, given a mobile phone's low antenna gain and transmit power. Moreover, the new Starlink satellites currently have limitations, as they have not yet been constructed according to their original intent. In fact, in fact, Starlink version 2 will be designed to be 7 meters long and weigh 1 and a quarter tons, or 1,130 kilograms, compared to about 660 pounds, or 300 kilograms, for the current Starlink satellites. This size requires SpaceX to launch them on Starship, its giant next-generation transportation system, rather than its workhorse Falcon 9. But Starship has not yet accomplished this task because it's still under development. Therefore, SpaceX and Elon Musk have to come up with a solution to make it more feasible. Certainly for any challenges, they can find ways to overcome them, as it is a common approach in Musk's mindset when operating large companies like SpaceX or Tesla. If Starship is not yet ready to fly, the primary solution is the smaller version of the Starlink satellite, known as Starlink Mini or Starlink Version 2 Mini, which can fit neatly into the fairing of the Falcon 9. Although it may not be as perfect as the planned Version 2, it can provide four times the capacity of Starlink Version 1 and 1.5. Starlink Version 2 Mini satellites are equipped with a new Hall Argon thruster to maneuver in orbit. They generate thrust 2.4 times stronger than the thruster on version 1.5 satellites and have a specific impulse of 1.5 times greater. The Starlink version 2 mini satellites are the first to use Argon thrusters in orbit. Additionally, the solutions for the direct to sell Starlink satellites to overcome speed and distant connectivity challenges also include new hardware, custom silicon, and a 2.7 by 2.3 meter phased array antenna using extremely sensitive receivers and high power transmitters to communicate with mobile phones from space. Undoubtedly, SpaceX's plans extend beyond this. The launch of the Starlink Global Mobile Network Connectivity on January 2nd marks just the commencement of a series of milestones. The company stated it will continue to launch a text service later, followed by voice, data, and IoT otherwise known as Internet of Things, a network of connected devices services in 2025. Precise timelines are unclear, as are whether the company plans to partner with other mobile carriers as well. Globally, Starlink has also announced partnerships with carriers including Optus in Australia, 1NZ in, you guessed it, New Zealand, KDDI in Japan, Salt in Switzerland, and Intel in Chile and Peru, though it's not clear when these services will launch. Finally, the launch
launch of Starlink will not only be limited to Falcon 9, as the world's largest launch vehicle, Starship, will also join the campaign after achieving orbit. Elon Musk's visionary pursuits consistently transcend conventional boundaries, spanning diverse industries. Considering Starlink's role in the evolution of global communication, particularly its engagement in emergency services and potential military applications, how do you envision its impact? As SpaceX forges ahead with ambitious Starlink plans, encompassing the introduction of text, voice, data, and IoT services in the upcoming years, what are your expectations for the future of worldwide internet connectivity? Do you foresee challenges and potential hurdles faced by SpaceX in developing the direct satellite-to-mobile phone connectivity service, along with the innovative solutions deployed, such as the Starlink version 2 mini-satellites? Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Your insights contribute to the ongoing conversation about the evolution of space technology and its impact on our daily lives. So don't hesitate. Share your thoughts, questions, and expectations with us. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you again next time.